backwards. Jane was barely alive when she arrived at the clinic eight months ago. There was always somebody with you, right? Yes. Did you like that? It makes you feel safe. They need so much positive reinforcement because they have no ability to put into perspective that they're worth anything. And if you can imagine, you know, a dog who's wounded or an animal who's kicked, I mean, the first thing you do, the natural instinct of any of us is to pick the animal up and to hold it until it feels better. But somehow we don't feel that right with human beings. It's interesting, isn't it? Some of the things we recorded you saying when we were here, when you first got here, were, I'm not to be loved. I'm worthless. Why are you not to be loved, honey? Hmm? Why don't you deserve to be loved? Because I'm a horrible, bad person. Because you're a horrible, bad person. Jane. Jane, listen to me. Look at me in my eyes, honey. Would you be here if you are a horrible, bad person? It's a mistake. It's not a mistake, darling. You said to Peggy, I'm a horrible, bad person. Is that what you thought of yourself? Yes. And when you said to Peggy, I'm not to be loved, I'm not to be saved. Did you really believe you were not worthy of being loved or of living? Yes. That's one thing I hated about people being here because they, did, they showed you so much love and care and I hated, I hated them for it. You resented it in a yeah. way, Because yeah. I didn't want them to love me. Well, I suppose I did deep down, but I wouldn't. I don't want to accept it. I don't think I should. Everybody wants to live if they know how to live. They need a map to be shown, to be guided through, to a point of possibility. We're not allowed to save you? No. Why not? You're not to be saved, Angel. If we like to save you, it's okay, sweetheart. It's okay. Jane, I make you something. Look at me. Look at me, darling. No more crying. Look at me, darling. Jane, I am going to save you. And you are allowed, Angel. You are allowed, sweetheart. And we'll hold you again. When we look at somebody like Jane, it is a miracle. Here is a young woman who, who looked as if, I mean, she was on the verge of death. And this personality has emerged. She smiles, she laughs. That was the, that was the most fun for us, to watch her personality evolve. She's actually quite a cheeky baggage, isn't she? Yes. <laughs> cheeky is a good word. Do you think you're thin enough now? <laughs> I don't know. Do you think you're thin enough? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair question. <laughs> Before, when she had anorexia for years in Scotland, she wasn't able to go into grocery stores. I can 120 grams of wild coho salmon fillet, please. Looking at food was too frightening. Looking to masses of food was inconceivable. And now she embraces it. So this is a major life-changing step for her. Definitely. It's, it's an acceptance of herself. Come on, Quincy. Today, Jane no longer requires constant supervision. While still in therapy, she shares an apartment with another of Peggy Claude Pierre's success stories. They're no longer monitored. They're no longer have somebody over the shoulder at all moments, giving her the idea that she is somebody without us. She doesn't need us anymore. I'm told you laugh a lot these days. <laughs> more than before. A lot more than before. You feel like it's the end of the world. You're my daughter and my best friend. I could feel it. Like I was near death. If Jane was heartbreaking, Shauna Critch was desperate. Last August, even after Claude Pierre convinced her over the phone to accept a feeding tube, she was given little chance of surviving in a Cleveland hospital. No, I can't okay. eat it. That's your concern, though, is the, the calories. At 25, she was consumed by anorexia. I don't feel like a human being anymore. I didn't think I deserved anything. Why not? 
I felt like I, I did everything wrong. I mean, I, I just looked back at my life, and I, I knew for over 10 years I had this illness, and I figured, what did I accomplish? Nothing. So I figured, why should I go on? I couldn't believe how this person had so much love for people who she never even met. And, um, and she was saying, I love you, you know, and I was thinking, how can you love me? But I knew she did. Seven months later, Shauna, like Jane, is still in therapy, but off full-time care and living in her own apartment. For me, to get up, to go out, to go walking, to go to a restaurant, get your meal, sit down, eat that meal, and go on after that. This was always a dream, Lynn. I never thought this could happen to me. And finally, it's not. It's reality. And, and I, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> this is the place where people really can get help. You really can get better. And Peggy is truly an angel. Everybody here is an angel. What have you learned? That there are wonderful people in the world who can do a lot of good. And I would like to be part of that, to do some good myself, if I can. <laughs> that transformation from helpless to helper has already happened with Jane. It would have been unimaginable seven months ago, but now she is reaching out to another victim of this deadly disorder. Someone you probably never realized was also in danger. Extraordinary. Well, when we come back, the surprising face of anorexia. Boys, like Ricky, when his parents saw our first report on anorexia, they were desperate.